Hey everybody, hope you're keeping well. Um, this is a video about what to do if your dog incessantly barks at you to play a game of fetch. So they drop the stick at your feet and they're bark, 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 bark until you throw that stick. This is a really common behavior problem that I see at the beach all of the time. Um, and it came as a request uh, or a question from one of my lovely clients, Linda and her dog, Charlie. She says that every time she lets Charlie off the lead, he starts demand barking for the stick, which is super, super annoying. Okay, so why do doggies do this? Well, it's a lot about excitement. You know, dogs love playing the game of fetch, which is completely understandable because it's a really fun game to play when you're a dog. So there's a lot of excitement involved in this behavior. And oftentimes uh, this barking to get the stick thrown is something that an owner accidentally encourages by throwing the stick when the dog barks. So in the early days, an owner generally doesn't understand that it's going to be a problem for them. So their dog is all excited and barky, barky, barky. Maybe the barking is a little bit annoying. So they throw the stick in order to stop the barking and get rid of the dog to go and chase the stick. And then by accident, the dog learns that they should bark at the owner in order to get them to throw the stick. Dogs are very clever and they understand that their barking is super annoying to you and that you will eventually throw the stick uh, in order to stop them from barking. So the first step for getting this under control is don't throw the stick if your dog is barking. And I know this is really, really difficult for some people whose dogs are severe barkers for the game of fetch because it can go on for nearly your entire walk and we'll talk about that in a minute. But the first step is don't throw the stick if your dog is barking, okay? Now, if your dog isn't barking, then by all means, throw the stick. So we need to um, try to achieve that for your doggy, uh, that they will be quiet or be calm, and that will be rewarded by throwing the stick. So how we achieve that will just depend on where your dog is in relation to this behavior issue. Some dogs are incessant barkers for the game of fetch, and then it might take a bit more structure and, and forethought about getting it under control. But if your dog is just starting to do this, then maybe you can get it on under control while on your walk. Um, so. The first thing to engage your brain with is if my dog is barking, I will not throw the stick. I won't even touch the stick if a dog is barking. So if the dog brings the stick to my feet and is barking, I won't even pick it up. I'll walk straight past it. If I bend down to pick it up and that's when the dog starts barking, I will drop the stick immediately. So the message to the dog is any barking ends the game of fetch. I drop the stick and I walk away and take a little break. OK, so um. It, some A lot of people will be able to get it under control literally with that little piece of information. Don't throw the stick if your dog is barking. Throw the stick if your dog is calm. Using manners around the game of fetch is really useful in this scenario. Get asking your dog to sit before you throw the stick. Asking your dog to sit and wait before you throw the stick. Of course, your dog has to have that training in place already before you can use it in the context of, of getting this behavior issue under control. So um, um, you go on your walk with a view to teaching your dog that they only get the stick thrown for them if they are quiet. OK, now that might be a big ask for some people, because like Linda um, men mentioned in her question, um, as soon as he is let off the lead, he's barking for the game of fetch. And that's difficult. And in scenarios like that, where the behavior might be quite severe, it's a good idea to maybe stop walking in the location that you usually go to to play fetch. Because when, like at the dog beach here in Nelson, lots of people play fetch with their dogs. So lots of dogs arrive to the beach with an expectation of playing fetch. So maybe while you're working on this, you can go to a different location where there isn't such an expectation to play, to play fetch. Of course, we're still in level four lockdown here in New Zealand going to level three on Tuesday there are still a lot of restrictions about what we can do and where we can go so I'm not advocating that anybody operate outside um, those parameters of course but you know this advice will span beyond the lockdown hopefully um, so going to a new location where your dog doesn't have the same expectation of playing fetch is sensible and also maybe starting this style of training you know putting manners around the game of fetch 
using an item that's not as charged for a dog. Some dogs are stick maniacs and this is where the barking happens. So maybe that owner would start with a ball or a tug rope or something like that um, to put some manners around the game of fetch where it's not so feverish. So changing walking location and changing the item can be great. Or even starting this training in your back garden would be sensible for some people so that you can really focus on your dog and you don't have that social pressure of embarrassment um, feeding into this. That often happens in when you're walking at the beach and your dog is being really loud and barky, barky, barky. You feel you have to keep throwing the stick because you're embarrassed about your dog's behavior and everybody else is looking at you. So if you start this training at home, you'll take that element out of it and you'll be able to just focus on what you and your dog is doing. So it's all about putting manners around that game of fetch. Having your dog sit, having your dog sit and wait before you throw the stick is a really, really great idea. That of course takes a little bit of training and dealing with it on location is that you don't throw the stick if your dog is barking and you reward calm mannerly behavior by throwing that stick. Another idea is, you know, if you're going to walk at the beach, for example, because you're meeting your friend and that's where you want to go and you know your dog is going to engage in this behavior, you need to preempt it and come up with a plan before you get there so that you don't just put your, your you and your dog in the position where they're barking and you're throwing the stick and rewarding that barking. So have a plan before you get to the beach so that you can short circuit this. Maybe you can bring a different toy for your dog so that they haven't got that ex expectation of playing fetch. Maybe you go armed with a bunch of treats and you're going to practice your training there. Maybe you arrange to meet a friend again outside of lockdown. Maybe you arrange to meet a friend with their doggy so you can carry out your walk and they can have some dog play instead of having this expectation of playing fetch. So how do we get this under control? Training and manners around the game of fetch by not accidentally rewarding the barking by throwing the stick and only throwing the stick when your dog is offering a calm, mannerly behavior. And finally, being clever about setting yourself up for a walk where you feel like it might happen so that you can get your dog doing something else and prevent the situation from arising. I hope this has been helpful. If anybody else has any questions about the game of fetch or anything else that you'd like me to make a video on, then please send them through and I'm happy to do that. Have a great day.